Israeli settlements in the West Bank are a major obstacle to a two-state solution for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. They represent a political, security, and economic liability for Israel, and an existential threat to Israel as a Jewish democratic state. Israel was established in 1948 to be a Jewish and democratic state and a light onto the nations. But this dream, realized 60 years ago, is now under threat. In 1967, Israel captured the West Bank from Jordan and the Gaza Strip from Egypt. Most Israelis viewed this development not only as an impressive military achievement, but also as a national achievement of historic, redemptive, and even messianic proportions. They also saw these vast territorial gains as providing Israel with a valuable security buffer to fend off future military attacks. Nevertheless, Israel never annexed the West Bank or Gaza. This is because annexing them would mean absorbing a large, hostile population that strives for its own national independence. But in reality, since 1967, official Israeli policy regarding the future of the West Bank and Gaza has been full of contradictions. Some Israeli leaders believe that these territories should be used as bargaining chips in a future land for peace agreement with the Palestinians. Some argue that Israel must keep all or part of the land for security or religious reasons. A few have suggested that Israel should unilaterally withdraw from parts of these areas that Israel doesn't want or doesn't need. If Sharon's disengagement plan goes ahead, it will be the first time ever that Israel has dismantled settlements there. Prime Minister Ariel Sharon did precisely this when he withdrew Israel's military bases and civilian settlements from the Gaza Strip in 2005. What all Israeli governments have had in common though, regardless of their conflicting visions for the future of the West Bank, is a policy of constructing settlements in the West Bank. Settlement construction started shortly after 1967 and still continues today. What are settlements? Settlements are Israeli-built residential areas inhabited by Jewish citizens of Israel, built on land that Israel captured in 1967. Some settlements are small towns, other resemble villages, and a few are the size of medium-sized cities. Many are located close to the pre-1967 border with Israel, also known as the Green Line, making it easily for settlers to commute to jobs inside Israel. Outposts are proto-settlements. They are new settlements, typically small ones, established in violation of Israeli law, which is why they're often referred to as illegal outposts. But even though these are illegal settlements, they often enjoy support from Israeli government agencies. The significance of outposts is that they are used by settlers to circumvent the Israeli government policy of not establishing new settlements. This has been an official policy of the Israeli government since the mid-1990s. This and dozens of similar sites in the West Bank are evidence of the ongoing Israeli expansion. As of mid-2010, there are 120 established settlements recognized and authorized by the Israeli government. There are also an additional 100 outposts of varying sizes. More than 350,000 Israelis live in these settlements and outposts. That number does not include the settlements in East Jerusalem, a part of the West Bank that was captured by Israel in 1967 and later annexed by Israel. In these pictures, taken during aerial surveys of the West Bank conducted by the Israeli Peace Now movement, you can see how settlements grow from just a few mobile homes to a full-fledged town in just a few years. When you consider the number and the spread of settlements throughout the West Bank, you realize why settlements are such an obstacle to a two-state solution. The West Bank, together with the narrow Gaza Strip, is the land in which Palestinians will establish their future state. With the West Bank and Gaza already separated, territorial contiguity within the West Bank is absolutely vital for the two-state solution to work. But settlements in the West Bank, particularly the ones far from the border between Israel and the West Bank, make it impossible to establish a contiguous future Palestinian state. Israel needs a viable and stable Palestinian state. It is a national security Israeli interest. Today, in the territory that Israel controls between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea, there are approximately six million Jews and six million Arabs. This includes Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza, 
and Palestinian citizens of Israel. Very soon, if Israel does not achieve a peace agreement that enables it to get out of most of the West Bank, Jews will become a minority in the area under Israel's control. Very soon, therefore, Israel will be home to a Jewish minority with full civil rights, ruling over a disenfranchised and discriminated against Palestinian majority. To remain a Jewish democracy, Israel must sever itself from the occupied West Bank. The settlements stand in the way of this necessary severance. Years ago, Israelis had some sympathy for the settlement enterprise. Many Israelis viewed the settlers as pioneers whose presence in the West Bank contributed to Israel's security by bolstering its eastern frontier. Now, however, most Israelis realize that the settlements are not an asset, but a liability. Settler extremists are increasingly brazen in their willingness to use violence to promote their agenda, including unprovoked attacks on Palestinians and their property, as well as on Israeli soldiers, police, and peace activists. The need to focus so much energy on protecting settlers and on curbing settler violence has transformed the Israeli army increasingly into a police force. This has eroded its ability to adequately organize and train for its primary mission, which is to fight wars. Israel's West Bank barrier, which was built ostensibly to improve Israeli security, has similarly been compromised for the settlers. Rather than following the border between Israel and the West Bank, the Green Line, its route has been gerrymandered in order to include settlements and in adjacent land deep inside the West Bank. Mr. Arafat extended a hand that seemed to be trembling. Mr. Rabin took it. In 1993, the Palestinian Liberation Organization signed the Oslo Accords with Israel. This agreement promised the Palestinians a negotiated resolution of their conflict with Israel. Since then, the number of settlers has almost tripled from 116,000 in 1993 to over 300,000 in 2010 not including East Jerusalem. Israel has committed to negotiating the future of the West Bank in peace talks. Settlement expansion makes this Israeli commitment look dishonest. Settlement construction in any part of the West Bank sends the message to Palestinians that Israel is not interested in engaging in negotiations in good faith. The message it sends to Palestinians is that Israel is deciding the future of the West Bank unilaterally through construction on the ground. From a Palestinian perspective, this is like two people negotiating over a pizza, while at the same time, one of them is eating at the same pizza, slice by slice. When Israel expands settlements, it makes those Palestinian leaders who support negotiations look like suckers, and this has caused an erosion in their domestic credibility. This dynamic also bolsters the political fortunes of those who argue that negotiations will never advance Palestinian goals, and who instead advocate violence and terrorism. Hamas's political rise cannot be disconnected from the failure of more moderate Palestinian leaders to get a peace agreement with Israel. The settlements drain Israel's beleaguered budget, with the government funding settlement-related construction and providing substantial direct and indirect funding for educational, housing, and transportation expenses, among other things, for the settlers. But the crux of the issue is not economic. The issue is first and foremost political. The problem is political, and so is the solution. Most Israeli politicians from across the political spectrum now acknowledge that resolving Israel's conflict with the Palestinians is an existential necessity. Polls have shown wide support among Israelis for a settlement freeze, for removal of outposts, and for further settlement evacuations. Past Israeli-Palestinian negotiations suggest that many West Bank settlers may be able to remain where they are under a future Israeli-Palestinian agreement as a part of a land swap deal. In other words, Israel would annex large settlements adjacent to the Green Line, also known as settlement blocks, and in turn compensate the future Palestinian state with lands of equal size and quality that are now in Israel proper. Many settlers who live in areas close to Israel may therefore find themselves annexed by Israel in a territorial swap that would be part of a peace deal. 
this is not just theoretical. In 2003, Israeli and Palestinian negotiators concluded a serious and comprehensive model peace agreement known as the Geneva Initiative. Negotiators at the time agreed on a territorial swap that would allow 165,000 settlers and another 192,000 Israelis in East Jerusalem to remain where they are and live under Israeli rule. But reaching such a solution is predicated on an end to settlement expansion. If settlements continue to expand, Israel might reach a situation where it does not have equivalent land reserves adjacent to the Green Line to swap with the future Palestine. Existing settlements already make territorial arrangements complicated. If settlements continue to expand, they will further complicate negotiations and they may destroy any chance of peace for Israel and Palestinians. Removing most of the West Bank settlements will be a monumental domestic challenge for any Israeli government. It will be very hard, but it is possible. A determined Israeli government can do the job. Israel has laws, courts, a police force, and a military. It can even handle those extremists who may try to resist violently. Moreover, an Israeli government that achieves a peace deal with the Palestinians, a deal that holds the promise of real peace and security, will likely enjoy the support of most Israelis. It will likely even enjoy the cooperation of most settlers when the time comes to remove the settlements. West Bank Settlements, an obstacle to peace and a threat to Israel's future. Those of us who care about Israel must work to stop the expansion of settlements and to create the conditions needed for their removal, for Israel's sake.